All right, welcome everybody. Uh, we're going to do another flight here in Microsoft Flight Simulator, this time the 737-900. I, I set up a flight plan, so we're going to see about getting started here in just a second. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull up the route here in Navigraph and show you the route that I've chosen for the flight plan. So we're going to come out of KPHX, which is... And we're going to, I got our, uh, I'll, I'll see what our transitions and everything are. I have that over off to the left here. Should be about a two hour flight or so. Taking us right in, should be a straight in run into Denver. Phoenix, Arizona to Denver. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize this and I'm going to go ahead and go down to the let's see if my uh, views are saved. Alright, they're still saved. So we're going to head over to the uh, FMC and we're going to hold down the menu button for a minute. Pull that up go over to FS actions go to ground services we already have our chalk set so we're going to click on ground power request and hopefully that will there we go alright now we're going to go over to the overhead panel Go ahead and turn our power on. Arm our emergency lights. And what I do, like I did in the past videos, is I go up here to the top and set our nav, set our align our IRS to nav on the right and the left. And then go ahead and turn our window heat on. And move down and go ahead and turn our logo light on, our anti-collision, and our wing light. And then go ahead and hit our ground power down. Push this button down. And we can go ahead and click on the odd damper even though it's set for automatic. So we're going to go ahead and go back down to the FMC. and enter our IRS position. We're going to go to initiate. We'll go hit FMC. We'll go to position. We'll put in K P H X. And we'll click that in our reference airport. Then we will click on the right. <clears throat> now we have our coordinates in here and we will go ahead and Put that in. Now that should be aligned. It's set to align in 30 seconds. Uh, we're sitting at a ramp, so I'm not sure what the gate number is, but uh, you don't have to put that in there. It's not absolutely necessary. So we're going to go into. Go back to our menu. Go to FS Actions. Click on our fuel. And I will pull this over here so you can see it from my other screen. And our block fuel is 17842. 
So we'll put 17, 8, 4, 2. Then we're going to click return. Click on payload. <clears throat> and then I will pull this up again. And our estimated zero fuel rate fuel weight is 149.0 so we'll put one it's already pretty close and we'll go ahead and click return click return and then what we're going to do now is go to our route and that's already lit up for KPHX and we will left click up here and put that in there uh, we will go ahead and get our co route you can hit flight plan request but I took it out of the chart so what I'm gonna do is just put in the co right instead of co route instead of putting in the flight plan so it's gonna be a little bit different but still the same so I will put K P H X and then put K D E N and click in co route and then already popped up we'll click on activate and then execute and before we go to our performance we'll go ahead and go to our departure departure and arrival page and we'll click on our departure and looking at our flight plan let me pull this back up real quick we're gonna be departing on 25 right so we will click on 25 right <clears throat> and our SID will be MRB IL1 So MRB <coughs> Excuse me IL1 And then I think it was JOPA but we'll check to make sure Yeah, JARPA Transition We'll click on JARPA now we have our SID and our transition altitude and we will click on execute now we'll go back to departure and arrival and we will click on KDEN for Denver and our runway for landing will be 34 left so here we are at ILS 34 left and our star will be tomorrow BBRRO and teller see they have our approach in here as well so let's see what we can do about finding that inside of our FMC click on next next there's to borrow for 34 so we'll click on this and then we need burrow and teller so here's burrow for our transition and then teller this will make sense here in a minute so it shows all three for our ILS approach we'll hit execute so now we will click on our legs page and we're gonna move it from map to plan So let's see how our route has turned out. 
So we will do our steps here and step through our route. And those stars are awful close together, so what I'm going to do is click on Dexter and put it over the top of JARPA and then click on Execute. This is something you'll just need to play around with when you do your route to try to make it connected. You can tell just by looking at it whether or not it's correct or not. So we'll go back and click on Legs and check again and we will go ahead and do our step through each one. Let's see, that's an awful tight turn there, so let's pull this back out a little bit further. See, we'll, what we'll do is we'll cut the cannon out because we're not going to have a sharp turn like that coming down. So what we'll do is we'll put, we'll take, we'll click on BBRRO and we'll, we'll click on cannon and now we have more of a straight line. You can see the dotted lines where it's going to create your route. And click on Execute. Then we will go ahead and let's step through some more here. And we have a discontinuity, so we will click on Teller and then put that in there. And you can see where the line's drawn. Click on Execute. And you can see where it's kind of going in. We could actually override Ladora and make that more of a direct line. So what I'm going to do is click on Teller and overwrite and now you see here we have more of a direct line and click on Execute. Now that looks a little bit better. Let's continue doing our steps. We could probably even get rid of one of these as well. Probably get rid of Teller and put it over Alpine or the other way around. Put Alpine over teller so that way it's more of a straight line so now when we continue to step and now we're directly over our runway and it looks like it would be much easier to line up So let's do a quick double check and we'll go ahead and click on legs. You can see our takeoff here going off to the right and we will click on step, step. And I will step through all of these here. Alright. So next step I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and go back to initiate now that we've already done put our fuel in and we have our weights and everything correct we can go ahead and just click on zero fuel weight and it pops up down here and click on it again now we have our planned zero fuel weight that's correct we have 2,000 pounds for extra fuel I think, let me check just to make sure. Yeah, a thousand pounds extra, so we'll just, or two thousand pounds extra, so we'll just put two point zero. Our cost index for, well, it's, all, it's, it's pretty much the same for all PMDG planes because Simbri puts them all at 18, so we will just put 18. 
and let's see what our altitude is for we will click on options and we have our altitude set to 33,000 so we'll just go ahead and put 330 our cruise win I'll go ahead and pull the chart back over here see if I can find it again here okay here's the wind we will put 306 slash 047 306 slash 47 and we will hit instead of hitting next here what I do is I just go ahead and click on N1 limits and we're not doing any D rates I've just always just selected the first one that's available so we will go ahead and click on takeoff and it's basically up to you how many what you want your flap set to I usually do a flaps 5 if it's light uh, but it's a little bit heavier so I'm gonna do a flaps 15 takeoff we will click on our center of gravity and that will pop up down here and we'll go ahead and click on that and we have a trim of 4.90 we'll go ahead and click next and our win was 306 at 47 so we'll put 306 slash 47 and our runway slope we'll put zero our runway is dry and there's nothing else to fill out here but we'll go ahead and click back on next and then click on our V refs our VR or V VR V1 V2 so you see we still have our trim to set so I will go ahead and pull up to I don't have a setting set specifically for the trim handle which is 4.90 which it looks like that it pretty much sets it pretty close for you which is going to be right underneath the 5 it still irritates me the fact that you can't there's no place to actually confirm what your trim is I don't know why PMDG did that. If there is, I would really like to know. I went through and checked all of this here. There's no place to check that. So the next thing we will do is go ahead and go back over to our overhead panel. And we will need to start up our APU. So what I do is I go ahead and flip the fuel pumps on. And the hydraulic pumps on. And we'll come down here and turn our APU on. Now earlier I tested this and for some reason I had to turn the APU bleed forward before the APU would start. I don't know why that did that, but we will just try it again to see if it's going to work the correct way. See, that's what it was doing, low oil. On the 737 737-600, you could leave this back and it would still go ahead and go forward. Oh, there it goes. It's still go ahead and, and working. So maybe I was just doing something wrong. Yeah, 
We will wait for the EGT on the APU to settle. I'm not sure what you what you mean by the identifier. And now the now that that's ready, we're going to go ahead and click on the two center. Is it in the FMC that is an option for identifier? Because that's not just that's not familiar to me. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's it's turned off in Microsoft Flight Simulator. I can turn that on so you can actually see what what it is. I think it's under the assistance. I think it's aircraft systems that you're talking about inside the notifications. We will see that here in a minute. That's not it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, but I had all that turned off inside of inside flight sim. And I just tried to turn it back on. And I turned it on, so I don't know why. I will see if that is what fixed it. Sky Harbor Airport Information Golf One Six Zero Zero Zulu. Wind calm. Visibility. Clear. I did that by accident. Sky condition clear. Temperature one five. Dew point one three. Altimeter two nine or decimal nine or two. ILS runway. If I can't get it to work, what I'll do is I'll fix it for the next... I'm going to do another one tomorrow, so if I can't get it to work, I know what you're talking about. I may have to re actually restart the flight sim in order for it to show up. It should have been underneath notifications. When I click aircraft systems, when I turn that on, it should have showed up exactly what I was hovering over. And that's kind of odd that it didn't. I will turn that on too to see if that...
Yeah, I think I turned it on, but I may have to, I would probably have to restart the flight in order for it to work correctly. Because I think it's this notification right here where it says aircraft system. No, it's, it's not showing up for me either. I turned it all off because I was just familiar with it and some of the boxes were just so big that it was kind of interrupting what I was doing. But when it comes to helping somebody else, it, it makes sense for them to be on. Yeah, that's, that's not, that popped up, so the other stuff should have popped up too. So I don't need the flying tips, but I know it is aircraft systems. I plan on doing another one of these videos tomorrow, so I will make sure that it's working. I just don't want to have to, I don't want to start the flight all over again now. Let's see if maybe it's working. All right, so anyway, let's go ahead and go back. Phoenix ground, VAC 1977, We have our APU running. And I had just turned the ground, or the ground power off over to the GPU. So we need to go ahead and go down and turn our ground power off. But I promise I will do another one there. No, that's just giving me the uh, tips on the engine start. But I know I do know which one you're talking about. So I'm going to release the ground power and then we're going to go back up top. I will try to explain as much as I possibly can while I'm pointing things out to try to help. And I will do another video with that on, but I think it's because I may have to start Microsoft Flight Simulator for it to work. So we're going to click on our APU bleed right here. And we're going to select, we're going to start the right engine, so we're going to click this right here. I've tried to highlight it, but it's still not working. That That is kind of irritating me now.
All right. Wonder if I move outside the plane and then go back in if it'll start working. Yeah, my tractor where my airport I'm going is working, so that, that's weird. So anyway, what we're going to do is go ahead and start up one of the engines. For some reason, everyone starts the right engine, and I brought that up in, a, in many streams before. They just, for some reason, always start the right engine. They say it's for wear and tear. Whoops, almost turned my uh, engine bleeds off. Well, I did turn them off. I had to turn them back on. So we flip the engine start switch to the right. And then we will hit the ground power to the right, to the left, one notch. And right here, because I have it for auto start, when it gets to... To three it'll stop and then you just flip the right engine up and it will ignite so we're almost there now see and I'm hovering over it right now and it's not it's not doing it so we'll go ahead and flip that up It's this one right here. I'm sure you probably are pretty familiar with that. Oh, I will have it fixed for the next one. Now that you brought it up, I will make sure that it's working. And I'll go back to the overhead panel. And this has gone from ground back to auto. So we will flip this engine over to the left. And then we will click on ground for the right engine. And if I tell you I'm going to make sure it's fixed for the next one, I will make sure it's fixed. It seems like it should, it should have started working when I turned it on inside the setting. Not unless there's a setting inside PMDG. Oh, you're talking about me flipping it over to full screen. Is that what you're talking about? Because I can flip the screen over to full screen if... I was just looking in here real quick to see if maybe Oops. 
no, I know what what he's talking about, but I think it would require me to restart the whole game in order for that to happen. And I don't know why the bar is still at the bottom now. for some odd reason that's the best I can get it to do there now it's working all right so anyway um almost lost my train of thought after the engines are started I have P3D installed I just don't have FSX installed anymore on here we're gonna click the two outer generators so we switch it over from the GPU to the engines of the plane so we're going to right click or left click left click oop I never even turned my engine throttle not knob all the way up I haven't used FSX in probably five years. I switched over to P3D and I'm still waiting on the PMDG 777 to come to Microsoft Flight Simulator. That's still my favorite plane, but this is kind of the closest thing I can get until they release that. Alright, now my engines are up and running. Now I just need to switch my other one. So we'll click over to the left. Now it's both on the engines. Now I can switch my APU bleed off. And switch my APU off. So I'm just clicking on the seat belts and smoking sign to auto everything else on the overhead panel is pretty much set I can go ahead and turn my taxi light on now we're gonna go down to here and put our speeds in and our altitude so it's gonna be flight level 330 Yeah, but just because because the processor's old doesn't mean that it still wouldn't work. <clears throat> the uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator seems to be more demanding on the video card. And, you know, I remember talking to you the other day. If you would probably just try upgrading the video card, that w would probably work for Microsoft Flight Simulator. And I'm going to turn both my flight directors on. And then if I've set everything up correctly in the FMC, then my VNAV and LNAV should come on. And we're going to go ahead and turn the auto throttle to arm. 
Microsoft, you know, you, you can't really tell the difference between ultra settings and high settings, and then again from medium to high and then low to medium. I have mine set to high. I mean, I could probably set some of them to ultra, but I try to stay 50 or above. I know it'll work fine, you know. Most people like between 30 and 50 frames per second, but that works out pretty good. So, let's see, this did this the other day. My flaps were already set when I hadn't even pushed them. Wonder if I have a key sticking or something. I'm going to go ahead and set these to 15 because that's our takeoff. And then I'm going to set my auto brakes to RTO. I, I'm, I'm reading your, your comments at the same time I'm talking, so anything else just keep on letting me know I will try to answer it the best way I can so now we're ready for our pushback and takeoff so we just need to turn our TCAS on Yeah, I, I have the PMDG 737 in Microsoft Flight Simulator inside P3D and now in here. I mean, having to buy it constantly over and over has been a pain, but really it's not a bad deal with Microsoft Flight Simulator. I'm turning this all the way over to the right, to the right where it says TRRA and then hitting the middle button for its test. So now we're going to go down to the FMC and then call for, we'll go ahead and set our chocks to removed. And then go to our pushback. And I just always have them just do a straight out push. I mean, you can have them do it any way you want to. But I select once for the TPX 200 tug. And then I click on start. If, if I would say more than likely you'll be able to use your a new video card with that motherboard. Your motherboard probably is PCI Express 3.0. That's really not going to be a big issue as far as your video card go. I mean, current video cards can't saturate over, th you know, the 3.0 the 3 now. So if you stuck, like, maybe even just a 3060 in it, it still wouldn't. S yeah, but you, you wouldn't have to put all three. You wouldn't need three video cards. I mean, just one would be plenty. Microsoft Flight Simulator doesn't even support SLI. I don't believe it does anyway. <coughs> Must set our speed to 145 because I believe that was our... Takeoff speed. 
let him get the tug out of the way. I mean, if Microsoft, if if FSX would have been 64-bit or moved it over to 64-bit, I think it would have lasted so much longer. Yeah, most graphics card these days should support more than one monitor. I mean, you're going to be able to hook as many monitors as you have plugs on the back of your... I'm guessing you probably have the, uh, you don't have the, the current plugs on the back of your video card. I can't even think of what it's called. It's, it's a digital plug. It, it kind of looks like the old version, but I can't remember what it's called. So... Our runway's right over here. I tried to put the plane close to the runway. Yeah, display port. So, I mean, even though this... I don't know if this will work if I hold down the brake or not, if that will release. Yeah, I actually got it to work. If you hold the brake down, this parking brake is a pain in the rear end if you don't have a uh, rudder pedal sitting on the floor. Well, with today's pricing, that's really not all that bad. Did you already stick it in your computer? Yeah, AMD and NVIDIA have really, really screwed people over in the past few years when it comes to pricing. I had bought a 1080 Ti for the retail price, it was like six six ninety nine. And then everything just kind of shot through the roof. I mean, it was just unbelievable. No, but that's... 446 euros is not really the bad price for that. I remember when I was trying to get a hold of it, just to get a hold of a 30 series card, period. I mean, I just went without it because they were just, I wasn't paying $1,000 or $1,500 for a video card. So I'm going to turn my taxi light off, turn our landing lights on. Yeah, but you're in your biggest, with Microsoft Flight Simulator right now, your biggest help would be a video card. I mean, if you're wanting to upgrade one or the other, I would upgrade the video card. That's just my opinion. So I'm going to click on the little screw here to uh, enable Toga.
Gear up. Phoenix approach BAC 1977 or 77 heavy is type 1 miles west of Sky Harbor 1,400 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. And autopilot set and I'll sit here and talk throughout the flight. So basically if you can get the first part of the if you get it set up correctly on the ground from the get go, you shouldn't have no problems. But I still had problems trying to land. I don't know what was going on. For some reason, I can't get the ILS to work properly. I still don't know if it's Microsoft Flight Simulator, if it's uh, PMDG, or if it's me. I've been landing the same way on all of them for a long time. And for some reason, the auto land doesn't work. So I've had to start practicing how to disconnect the autopilot and land. You have 24 gigs in your on your uh, motherboard, and it, Windows doesn't show off 24 gigabyte of it. If that's the case, either it's not seated properly, or is it? Is it, you got to check to make sure it's matching RAM as well. If you got to, if you got all those put in there and it's not showing up, there has to be something wrong with one of your slots. My first guess would be is to turn your computer off and then take each one out and try to slot them back in. Oh, CPU shows all of them. Oh, okay. I got you. That's weird. Are you using Windows 10, Windows 11? If you had 24 gig installed, it should show like 23 something. Even in CPU Z, it should show 24, like 20, 20, 23, 75 or something in there. You know what? Did you check to see if Windows 10 supported? Did you check to see if Windows... Maybe it could be your motherboard. I, you know what? I'm not 100% sure. If Windows 10 should be reporting it inside your operating system, then it should be showing up in Microsoft Flight Simulator.
They're above 10,000 feet, so I will turn the landing lights off. Then once we cross 18,000 feet, then we will set our barrel reference to standard. My current computer now, I've just always built my own computers. But I, it's been a long time since I've seen the motherboard you're talking about. I mean, there's nothing wrong with having some of the older boards. I mean, they hold up really well. I had a friend that had a 2600K, and he just did not want to let go of that. And he, he kept it all the way up until the, uh, I think it was the Comet Lake 10th generation come out. You know, and then things kind of started changing during the 12th and 13th gen processors when we have our P cores and E cores. But really, the processors for over 10 years really hadn't changed all that much except for clock speed. I mean, we had four cores and eight threads for 10 years. I mean, even actually back in like 2007. In 2007, it was like four core, eight threads all the way up until 2020. I don't know if there's a way you can, if you don't know how to fix it yourself, I would probably try to find some local shop that maybe tried charging you something cheap to show, you know, maybe they could figure out why it's not showing up correctly. I assume that's DDR3 RAM. The good thing about DDR3 RAM is the latency was extremely good. I mean, that's some of the problem. I'm using DDR5 now, you know, and the, they're getting faster, but in hindsight, it's really not faster because the latency is unbelievable. Some of the DDR3, it was like 8.8. It was like 8, 8, 10 or 8, 8, 8, 12. Now it's up to... Yeah, that, that would HyperX is good RAM. So we crossed 18,000 feet, so click on standard. Looks like we're still about 80 miles until we get to our top of climb, which is the highest point for the plane. Really, you know, the PMDG uh, 737-600, for a plane that, you know, is basically full you know, has all the bells and whistles is really a really decent price for what it costs. This is not the first time I've had this problem either. I've had that cabin, cabin altitude warning go off on the 737-700 with no way to shut it off.
It actually went off this time. But it's still showing. Oh, I... I played FSS, FSX up until they released it on Steam. Then I played it on Steam for a good while. And then when P3D version 4 came out. And, and it, P3D is basically FSX with that 64-bit. And I moved over to P3D 4. And then they released P3D 5. And I played that for a good while. And then Microsoft Flight Simulator released, but then I didn't even mess with Microsoft Flight Simulator for almost two years after it was released because I knew that there was no PMDG of anything out. There wasn't going to be any good planes out for a good while, so that's why I did it. I have the multiplayer shut off on here just to keep my frame rates up while I'm streaming, but I think the multiplayer is kind of cool now where you can actually see other people flying around. I mean, it's actually kind of hilarious what some of these people will try to do, and you watch them try to land and take off, and they're doing circles all, all, doing circles all around you and everything else. It's actually kind of cool to see. probably get lucky enough to watch me crash this plane if it doesn't if I can't get the ILS to land properly Just curious, is that all you play is FSX and flight sim games, or do you play any other kind of things? Oh, roller coin? I never heard of that. I thought you were going to say roller coaster. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've never tried to mine cryptocurrency or never had much interest in, in, in that. I did like to play first, I used to, sp to play first person shooters around the clock back in the day with Battlefield 3 and 4 and then when 5 came out it kind of leveled off and I kind of got bored of it. I will make sure that the uh, the hovering over my next stream works so it can highlight what I'm actually doing inside the plane. I know it can be difficult, especially if you've never done it much before.
My first flight sim was FS2004. Of course, that was back in 2003 when I think it was 2003 when it was released. And FSX is when I started to learn a little bit about commercial playing. I mean, it's fun, but once you after you take off, it kind of gets boring. And I also tried the time compression in the PMDG. You can, <clears throat> excuse me, you can do time compression to race your plane to the end. But when you do that, it messes up your top of climb and your top of descent and everything else. And my, my plane was doing flips when I turned it off. So I quit doing that. Yeah, I remember the F-14, the F-14 Tomcat. Jets are a lot of fun inside this game. That's why I still have P3D installed is because if I'm going high way up in the air, I mean, it's just fun just to get in that jet and fly all over the place. Microsoft Flight Simulator is amazing if you're just doing like low and slow and want to fly over your own neighborhood or whatever almost up to our top of climb Actually, the landing challenges and some of the challenges in Microsoft Flight Simulator are kind of fun to play. I could land the small planes, but when I tried to land a 747 in one of the landing challenges, I kept crashing it into the ground. So that just tells you how well I am at landing. I was so dependent on the computer inside the computer inside the computer of the PMDG and Phoenix and Aerosoft planes that I just didn't practice enough to actually land the planes. I remember with FSX, I had, with the Gold Edition, we had to keep... It used to be a real pain before the Steam version, trying to get it to install off the disc. You'd have to insert that first disc, and then you'd have to flip over to the second one, and then you'd have to install the third one in order to get it to work correctly too well see that's what it was supposed to do inside these current planes and it's not doing it for some reason I'm flying them exactly the same way as I did in FSX and PMD or in P3D but I'm still having a little bit of trouble, but I will eventually figure it out. You know, x planes not too bad, but the problem is they just don't have no good scenery now like what they offer today with this flight sim. Are you talking about an FSX? Yeah, I remember you could just basically when you got close to your airport, you could just hit the approach button and it would just guide you right down to the airport. 
or to your runway. For some reason, I think there's something not completely finished inside of Microsoft Flight Simulator for the VNAV to work properly. PMDG just did another update because they said they're preparing for the 777 release sometime soon. Yeah, but then it still landed anyway. That's what you're saying. That's what I think is... You're talking about... Are you talking about the altitude like right here? I remember in, uh, in uh, <clears throat> excuse me, FSX and P3D, you could just leave it set on auto and it would take you right down to the runway. In, in P3D, you would just click on approach and then click on your second autopilot and then that was it. You would go right down to the runway. Yeah, it had to have been the APP button, like right here. It would, I remember it would work even in the default aircraft. Oh, okay, I got you. I understand what you're saying.
I'm not 100% sure which, which button you're talking about. What I understand you're talking about the glide slope going down over going down to the runway. Alright, yeah, I'm kind of curious which button you're talking about. If you, if you get your computer upgraded or whatever, then maybe we can get in there and do a multiplayer flight sometime. I will be back in a couple seconds. I'm gonna run to the restroom real quick. All right, I'm back. I'm gonna check again to see if I've... 
I'm still kind of irritated about that not being able to highlight. I think I found it. Yeah, there it is. That's what you're talking about there. Why did my flaps go? Yeah, it sure does. I appreciate that. You were talking about the elevator trim when I was setting it at the beginning. My flaps went back to, to setting a five for some reason. I don't know what's going on with that. Well, see inside the PMDG 777 when you could pull up your flight controls and right there at the bottom of the flight controls where you would test them it would show you what your trim is and you would set it to what your trim is you could spin it and then you could see exactly on the screen what it was and I could never could understand why didn't they do that inside this plane I'm going to see if there's a bug and see if someone else has had that problem with their flaps. I've never seen that happen before. After I paused it and then sat back down, my flaps had gone back to flaps 5. And when I first sit down to actually start the game it's sitting there at flaps five and I have no idea why So yeah, now you you can 
kind of highlight all of them again. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure I shut that off because it was irritating me. But really, that's about the only way you can set the trim in this plane. There's still about, let's see, that one leg's 114 miles, so. Guess I should have chose a shorter flight. I'm using the Microsoft Flight Simulator Insider Beta, so that could be a reason why that the flaps keep doing that. Yeah, but really all you do, I mean, I talked to you in the past, it, I mean, the Ryzen, the Ryzen processors are just as good now as Intel when it comes for flight simming. I mean, you could just pick up just like a six core processor for around 150 bucks, I think now. It's actually pretty cheap to get a motherboard and processor. The good thing is you already have a case. I mean, you have to replace your RAM. And if you end up on a DDR4, or I mean DDR5 platform, it's about the same price for DDR5 as it is for DDR4. I assume you're using just a standard SSD now. I don't think the X58's even had M.2 slots. You'll really appreciate the M.2s. They're they're screaming fast. I think the one I'm using has a read and write speed of about 7,000 megabits per second. And that's for the Gen 4. A lot of them are... I mean, they're trying to push past that now. Yeah, exactly. I'm just talking. I mean, I think even some of the 3060s have 12 gigabytes on them. It may have been just the 3060 Ti, but I thought for sure a 3060 had, they had a 12 gig version. I'm using a 4070 Ti and it only came in a 12 gigabyte version. I thought that was kind of insane. With the 4080s having 16 gig. I mean. NVIDIA needs to kind of get it. And get it in gear. And straighten things out.
Yeah, but still, that's not that, that's good enough for what you need it for. I don't know if you use Steam or not, but if you look at it, most people don't have more than four to six gigabytes of VRAM. You could probably run everything close to at least medium high with that video card. I'm not exactly sure what you would get with that current motherboard and processor, but. As I said earlier, the medium settings, medium high settings, you know, that still looks really, really good. It doesn't seem to take as much to run Microsoft Flight Simulator like it it takes to take, you know, to run X Plane or P3D. And I can imagine that's because it's all streaming to your your internet connection seems to have more to do with it than some of the hardware I am running on a two gigabyte connection and I have two 2.5 gigabit Ethernet cards and also have a 2 gigabyte Wi Fi. <clears throat> yeah, I didn't think the M.2s come out until I thought it was 7th gen. It may have been 8th gen. I'm not exactly sure. I started using them back in, I think, when I had my first 90. 9900K I think is what I had when I got my first M.2 But later down the line you'll really really appreciate that I mean I'm still using a regular mechanical hard drive for storage I mean But even SSD storage is starting to drop in price It'd be nice if all the video cards would. Yeah, Samsung is the best. I've never had a Samsung M.2 or SSD ever fail on me. If you're in the UK, do you guys celebrate Easter over there? I didn't know if Easter was just an American holiday or not, because it's a holiday here tomorrow. Or if you're in the UK or Europe, it's today is in Sunday there. Oh, Portugal, okay. I have a cousin that's married to someone from Portugal. He got himself a rich woman. I have that livery installed because I like the planes. I try to kind of use a little bit of everything. The only livery I don't like is the British Airways. I don't really care for it too much, but... Yeah, that's an extremely popular one too.
least there's some color in Europe. All ours are like a plain white with just their name on the side of it. I'll be doing a try be trying to do a stream at least once every other day, if not every day. I just started doing this again oh about two weeks ago, so as I try to teach others I'm trying to teach myself again. I'm, I mean I'm pretty rusty at some of these complex planes, but after a while they're really not all that complex. Aerosoft was supposed to bring its A330 in there. I don't know if you're interested in the biggest airline. Our biggest airline, I think, is probably American. American Airlines. If you're talking about the biggest planes, you guys got the biggest plane. You got the A380. You know, people around here, you know, they say that America is, you know, the best place in the world to live. And, you know, it's more expensive to live in a lot of parts of Europe than it is here. And, you know, yeah, America's a great country, but if I was rich, I'd probably be living in Europe. And it seems like a lot of people in Europe would be living in the United States. So do you actually have Microsoft Flight Simulator installed right now or are you just waiting until you upgrade your video card? <laughs> yeah, you probably would be. There's like a 15 second delay when I talk and then you receive it on your end. I do know that. Well, I'm in Florida. And I'm actually was born in the northern part of the country where it's cold and I'm, I've been down here for a long time and I'm still not used to the heat. I started my original YouTube channel back in 2015 and then kind of just quit doing it for a long time and I was starting to do giveaways I had like 20,000 subscribers and then things got busy in my life where I just didn't have time for it but as soon as my subscriber levels back up again I plan on doing giveaways and things like that again
in all honesty I couldn't even tell you what the temperature is over there and because we're, we use the imperial system and you guys are under the metric system and so when we talk hot over here is 90 degrees and I think it's hot over there when it's like 25 or 30 something like that it gets really hot in Florida in the summertime I mean you don't go outside unless you're getting in your car to get in air conditioning to go to work soft flight simulator it is a lot easier to to install things it's kind of more like x-plane where you just kind of you can drag and drop airports into a folder I remember my FSX I mean my registry would be crammed full of nothing but installers yeah 113 that's that's extremely hot I wouldn't even go outside if it was that hot. In our desert out in out west it gets to be about 130 in the summertime. Yeah, I'm in Central Florida, and it's a, it's like an hour either way to go from either coast. So north, or go to the east coast, or go to the west coast. It's about an hour drive either way. Does Portugal use Fahrenheit? I thought you guys had to use Celsius. That's not really all that far at all. Uh, okay, I got you. actually getting pr pretty close to our star here on the route No, I've never, never have. You talking about sports? Oh yeah, in flight simulator, I've flown all over the place. Actually, I think the, I have one set up for tomorrow. I think I'm on a setup in Europe. 
I remember in FSX, it, for some odd reason, it was easier to set a flight up in Europe than it is in the U.S. It's like when you when you set it up through Navigraph or whatever or Simbrief, it would always take you straight into the run under the runway. In the United States, you have to keep modifying it to get it to line up with your runway. I don't know if you, what you use when you plan your flights or what you used in FSX. <clears throat> it used to be like a Aerosoft flight plan, or I think it was called PDF or something, P PDFS or something I used to use for flight planning in FSX. And then Simbri became really popular. I think I'm HBU here, and then I think I'll be hitting my star here soon. Yeah, about BBRRO is the start of the star, so that's where my top of descent will be. As soon as they release the triple seven, I'll probably spend half my life flying that one again. But because it's so big, you know, it's not really for short flights, it's for the long haul flights. But I used to fly that one around the world a couple times. Yeah, I'm using the, I have a Cytec yoke and pedals, I, well I don't use the pedals anymore, I have a Cytec yoke and throttles and then I have the Airbus Thrustmaster, which has the flaps control on it for the Airbus, but now I wish I would have bought the Thrustmaster for the for the Boeing planes because I've been spending more time in Boeing planes than I do Airbus. But Airbus is so much easier to fly than a, than the 737s. But really they're easy too, really. I, I really enjoyed having rudder pedals, but I have a couple small dogs and I had to keep covering it up because they like to go over there and hike their legs, so I end up using just the joystick for my for my rudder pedals. Yeah, it is, but I use it just just for the 737 then I'll use my Airbus controls well that's one good thing about Microsoft Flight Simulator as well is there's a lot more uh, choices out there for throttles and yoke and everything else but you know they come with a, a pretty steep price as well
if it works, I mean, that's all that matters. I, I used to try to, I had three monitors one time and always wanted to try to build a cockpit, a cockpit out in the garage and... But now I just use my two monitors and... Kind of what I have, I think it'd be cool to be in a real flight sim. A real, uh, flight simulator where you can actually go inside of it like the pilots use. I'll be flying this, the 737 and the Phoenix, and then when the 777 and 747 gets released, I'll be stuck on it for a good long time. I went back to P3D a couple times and tried to compare the 737 with the one in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Every single thing was the same except for I was able to auto land right down to the runway. So I assume it's the same way in FSX. finally hitting the top of descent here. Alright, well you have a great night and I'll be on every night around 9 o'clock so just hit me up anytime or send me an email. If you want, a, want me to do a video on a certain plane just give me a yell. Have a good holiday tomorrow. So we're going to be doing a flaps 30 and our speed will be 149. 
depending on whether or not the glide slope works or if the shouldn't have to put the frequency in This should be the same regardless. Mountains look really, really good in this sim. I don't think I've ever landed in Denver. If I did, I probably crashed in the past, but we'll see. After this, I'll <clears throat> excuse me. I'll be off to play some Battlefield 5 or Call of Duty. If anyone in the future, whoever rewatches this, is interested in those types of game or have a game suggestion, feel free to leave it in the comments below this video, and I'll see about streaming it. I'll usually be doing my streams between 8 and 10 o'clock every night, so. Keep that in mind if you have a little bit of free time. And that would be Eastern Time. New York Time would be the easiest way for wherever you are. I know the UK is like five hours ahead of me. And Hawaii and Alaska is like five to seven hours behind me. get underneath 18 when we get to 18,000 feet we'll switch back over from our standard to our barrel reference
So we'll see if I'm getting ready to make an ass out of myself in a minute. If for some odd reason I still have problems, uh, I can always try again. If you watch this video later and you end up having problems, just try again. That's the best you can do. We're going to switch over to our standard barrel reference. When we get to 10,000 feet, we'll turn our run or landing lights on. I've tried to bend. I've I've tried to be specific as possible on each action I've made for those that might be new to flying that might need a little bit of help that's why I plan on re repeating a few of these flights and then I do plan on doing the Phoenix A320 I also tried flying the uh, Latin VFR A320 and it's A319 and unless you're a really 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 basic flyer to me, I just wasn't really all that thrilled about it. Looks like we are about... Well, we just lost a page, so... Ten, fifteen, seventeen, twenty, twenty-three, twenty-seven, thirty-three, thirty-nine, about thirty-nine miles to our runway. We're going to go ahead and give it a... Flaps 5. course is set to our runway heading which is 340 our heading is set for 340 for our runway and I'm pretty sure the altitude for Denver is just above 5,000 feet I have the auto brake set to three. We can go ahead and set that over to max.
I'm giving a little bit of speed brakes. Here's our runway right here, so we're just about there. As soon as we make our little turn right here, then I'll put the gear down and we'll go from there. Should be able to put the in approach mode as soon as we make our turn, but... Right here it'll light up white, right here to show us it'll get bigger, to show us that we're correctly lined up left and right, and up and down. And I do not like that. I accidentally turned on the wrong help options. We will go ahead and drop our gear down. I think it's a little bit behind. I mean, we're not landing, so... I mean, we're not taking off. I'm sound like an idiot. You can see our runway right about there, so we should be able to turn our approach on. And you can see our glide slopes alive. We're correctly lined up left and right. And right here's our glide slope for up and down. So we should be continuing down. And we're getting ready to intercept the glide slope right here. You can see the planes moving down. Now we just about captured the glide slope. And our reference flap speed is 30 degrees of flaps. We need to slow down just a little bit. Now we're at our flaps 30. And <clears throat> we're still on our glide slope.
and we still have our speed brakes out. Knock on wood, it's actually doing what it's supposed to do. And we're still on our glide slope. Now usually in the P3D and X-Plane you would click on the second autopilot to finish going down but for some reason it's not necessary in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Actually, we're just kind of just a little bit high. 1, but the ground is only at 5,000, so we're about... Now we're about 600 feet, 700 feet above the ground. We're actually still a little bit high. Turn our auto throttle off and disconnect our Reverse thrust. <clears throat> and we will go to the overhead and turn our landing lights off. and turn on our taxi lights. At this point we can go ahead and go to our overhead. And start our APU.
Maybe. while that finished powering up we'll, we'll go ahead and taxi to our spot at the airport I don't have my charts out to look to see where I'm exactly at, so let's see if we can find exactly where we are. Alright, so we need to go to our right and across. And welcome to Denver. So that was a much better landing than the last couple that I have done. and turn our flight directors off. So I'm not doing too great at following the center line, but I'll work on that next time.
See if we can grab a gate here real quick. This is from FS Dream Team. They make a lot of good airports. And I know that's not perfect, but it's perfect enough for me. And I'm going to go ahead and set the parking brake. Turn our taxi light off. And we are going to turn our engines over to the APU. And we can go ahead and shut those down. Go to our overhead and go ahead and start shutting everything off. We can turn our logo off, our position indicator, our anti-collision lights off, our wing light off. We can turn off our fuel pumps, our hydraulic pumps. Our seat belts, our probe heat, our window heat, our yaw damper, turn off our Ada Ruse. I think I'm not sure what the, what they're called in, in the 737. And I think that's pretty much it. Then we'll go down here and go down to menu, FS actions, ground service, we'll set our wheel chocks, call a ground power unit. All we did was, we went the opposite as what we did when we started. Go back to the top. Turn on our ground power. Turn off our APU. Turn our APU off, and now we're just on ground power, and then if you want to shut it off, then we'll just shut it off right here, and we'll turn our emergency lights from arm to off. And shut our battery off. Anyway, that is the 737-900ER from PMDG. If you'd like to see more of these videos, please like, sub subscribe, donate. Any likes really, 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 really help. I'm trying to get the channel back off the ground from 2015, so I really appreciate any support. I will be going in and doing another flight tomorrow evening at nine o'clock p nine o'clock p.m new york time with the a either the a320 or another 737 flight if you have requests feel free to ask i will also be doing first person shooters such as call of duty battlefield games like that if those interest you or if you will have a piece of software you'd like to see 
shoot me an email or just leave a message below and I will see what I can do. And that's it for tonight. All of you have a great evening. Take care now.